say you're doing whatever and suddenly you get an idea of something you could do. Uh, for me, I get inspired by something and I think, oh, it's such a good idea. I should make a video about that. And then I think about it for a while, whatever, a few minutes, and I go, yeah, yeah, sweet, that's gonna be awesome. But then later on, I go to do it and no longer really in love with the idea, but I still know it's a good idea. So I sit down and start doing it, but by that point, I'm kind of forcing myself to do it, and the act of doing it isn't really bringing me joy. And as I continue to force the idea into existence, it becomes more boring, and I notice more irrationalities in it, and at some point, I begin to just loathe it. I'm like, I hate this stupid idea, and I actually do this on repeat in a cycle. I think of a cool idea, I get myself up to do it, start doing it, fall out of love with the idea, try to grind it anyway, and ultimately let it go or sometimes take it all the way to completion but really hate what I've made anyway. Well, not always, of course, but often, I guess, and never want to look at it again. You know, if I told myself this problem a number of years ago, yeah, I'd bet you my earlier self would have parroted some nonsense about hustling and working hard and pumping things out, go, go, go. Perhaps I'd even criticize my current self for not being a hard enough worker or giving up on my ideas and not believing in myself, but I feel that I've reached a more zen plus objectivism way of looking at work, and now I just roll my eyes at my earlier self, because the style I feel I may be liking now is more spontaneity. See, this script, 100% spontaneous. I sat down, looked at the screen for 30 seconds, I wrote out, what have I been thinking about? Well, forcing things that idea about thinking of an idea to do and then saying, and then I just started writing the scripts you're listening to. I haven't tested this as to whether it's more productive. Frankly, I couldn't care less. I don't care one iota about which methods are more productive or time efficient or anything like that anymore. I simply feel that it's more appropriate to allow myself to drift toward working in ways that are more zen that's the second time I've said Zen. What's to do with that, right? Well, uh, a year ago, I got into Alan Watts, and he's epic. He's so great. Check him out on YouTube. He's got books as well, audio books. You know, through him, I've learned a lot about Zen Buddhism. And what I love about Zen Buddhism, and I suppose Buddhism in general, the, the Zen variation is particularly insight-oriented and mindfulness-oriented. In other words, like pondering, understanding self and I feel a whole lot less mystical than regular Buddhism, but you know, don't quote me, it's very difficult to understand this Eastern stuff. And, and as I was saying, what I love about Zen Buddhism is that it's so incredibly rational. I was reading just today in Watts's The Way of Zen, I think it's called The Way of Zen, maybe The Art of Zen, I can't quite remember. The quote is, just a very small quote here, reasonable, that is human, just that short quote, yeah, he literally equated reason, reasonable, with human. And then on the next page, in a different paragraph, he said, Supreme awakening or Buddhahood can be attained only from the human state. So, you know, supreme awakening or Buddhahood can be attained only from the reasonable state. Demonstrating that Buddhism goes hand in hand with reason or rationality. And I would have to say that the biggest influence on my morality or philosophy is Ayn Rand, who literally invented objectivism. Here's a quote from Ayn Rand about objectivism. Very, very common one. I don't know if I'll do her voice. My philosophy, you know, is essence, in, in essence, is the concept of man as a heroic being with his own happiness as moral purpose in of his life, with productive achievement as his noblest activity and reason as his only absolute. So hear that last part, reason as his only absolute. So I really love this merger between Zen Buddhism, think you know, insight oriented Buddhism and objectivism. You know, so far I've made a couple of scattered points. I think that's fine that they're scattered because gosh, I mean, everything <laughs> these days is so structured. It's like, oh, I'm, I'm as guilty as anyone. 
Uh, so I just feel it's quite refreshing to write in a more stream of consciousness way without really pausing. So let me summarize the points briefly. One, forcing myself to implement ideas that I have at some later date is boring and even painful, certainly lacking joy often. Two, Zen Buddhism encourages spontaneity. They say you're meant to be spontaneous. Three, Zen Buddhism is rational. So they arrived at point number two through rationality, not just as, oh, spontaneity is good. No, it's all about rational thought. Four, Ayn Rand's objectivism is rational. Five, Ayn Rand's objectivism states that happiness is the moral purpose of life with productive achievement as man's noblest activity. And so considering all of that, I feel we can say that spontaneous work recommended by a rational philosophy will support moral purpose, happiness and productive work far more than planned work and forcing oneself to implement ideas for which one may have already you know, lost love for. So what is your philosophy of work? Do you think that the Gary Vaynerchuk, you know, work hard and tell people how hard you work so they think you're cool even though your work is to do marketing for a massive, oppressive corporation, you know, multiple corporations? Or do you favor spontaneity? Or do you have a completely different idea? I'd love to hear it, so please share it in the comments. Thanks for listening, watching all the way to the end. Have a great day.